Niger, one of the three countries which are leaving the economic community of West African states ECOWAS, submitted its notification on Tuesday to ECOWAS to make official its withdrawal from the regional bloc. The French news agency AFP said Mali and Burkina Faso have already formally notified ECOWAS. Lansana Kouyate is the former Secretary General of ECOWAS and now an opposition leader in Guinea. He tells reporter Karim Kamara that ECOWAS is to blame for the deteriorating relations between ECOWAS and the three member states. It is unfortunate for both sides. ECOWAS at the onset have been created to promote the strength of West Africa, known as economic community for West African states. But it goes beyond the economic uh, aspect. ECOWAS is a very complex organization, but it is the first also regional organization in, 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 in the continent. I believe the situation which prevailed after the coups in uh, the three countries have created a kind of impediment because for me, honestly speaking, it has been a disaster of decision which was uh, taken in uh, Guinea-Bissau at the first instance of the coups. They went too quickly to impose a sanction. The president of the Republic of Togo have done tremendous efforts to avoid this escalation. I know. And we had the three countries accusing one European country, which um, they say is behind and um, all the sanctions ECOWAS has imposed on the three member states. The international community look only when the coup d'etat happened. But what happened before the coup? What culminated to that? People don't see that. And finally, what do you think would be the lasting solution? The principle, when you want to leave ECOWAS, you have to spend one year on following the process which is described in uh, the treaty of ECOWAS. I hope before that the goodwill will prevail. So I heard the Secretary General saying that, look, they want this country, they need them, and they need each other, so they should come together and negotiate. If it is followed by appropriate decision regarding, I mean, the contradiction between ECOWAS and the three countries, it's very simple. They went very quickly to implement sanction. And now the three countries, they have uh, the right because... Uh, uh, it has been uh, decided by ECOWAS itself that any country can go uh, away from ECOWAS. This is what is done now. If ECOWAS have given the signal that they still believe that negotiation can go and resolve this problem, they have to find very good negotiator. Lansana Koyate is the former Secretary General of ECOWAS and now an opposition leader in Guinea. He spoke with reporter Karim Kamara in Conakry, Guinea. Kenya is calling for increased collaboration in intelligence and security across Eastern African nations to counter transnational security threats. This week, the country is hosting security and intelligence chiefs from 14 African nations to assess gaps in the security sector and tackle issues such as terrorism, poaching, piracy, drugs, and human trafficking, Mohammed Yusuf reports. Kenya is calling for increased collaboration in intelligence and security across Eastern African nations to counter transnational security threats. This week, the country is hosting security and intelligence chief from 14 African nations to assess gaps in its security sector and tackle issues such as terrorism, poaching, piracy, drugs and human trafficking, Mohamed Yusuf reports. Kenya says the aim of this week's meeting is to deepen cooperation and collaboration to fight transnational security issues. Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa told security officials meeting in the port city of Mombasa that staying updated and adaptive is crucial to address evolving challenges of regional and global security threats. National intelligence service officers are an essential component in collection of evidence-based information for action by other state agencies. In an environment where networks of criminals have gone regional and global, national intelligence services cannot be left behind. The eight-country East African community, along with Comoros, Djibouti, Eritrea, Ethiopia, Malawi, Mozambique and Seychelles, 
have come together to build working security relations to combat the threats of terrorism, drugs, human trafficking and the armed groups takeover of natural resources, like the mines in the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo. According to the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crimes, Southern and Eastern Africa are becoming trafficking routes for criminals, with traffickers collaborating across borders using smartphones and other advanced technologies that make it harder to disrupt their activities. Corruption, lack of cooperation and poor relations among some African countries have been blamed for enabling the criminal activities to escalate. Richard Tuta is a Kenyan security expert. He says the conference is trying to ease the distrust among countries and their intelligence agencies. That conference is trying to bring about, uh, to end about suspicion among Estevania's uh, intelligence community. And once that suspicion is ended, then there will be collaboration and uh, information sharing among us all these intelligence community because what there is and what has been there before is the ring fencing of information so that everybody is suspicious of each other. In some instances, countries have shared intelligence which prevented acts of terrorism such as Kenya and Somalia cooperating against militant group Al-Shabaab. Gashagwa says security officers in the region must devise more strategies to deal with such groups and criminal gangs. We must be armed with highly innovative infrastructure for tracing, tracking and monitoring potential threats for early elimination and prevention. Security chiefs here are advisors of key state decision makers. Your work must inform legal and policy actions for sustainable security solutions. The Mashariki Cooperation Conference in Mombasa ends on Thursday. Mohamed Yusuf, VOA News. Senegal's opposition leader Osimane Sonko has officially confirmed the selection of Basilo Diomaye Faye as his replacement for the upcoming presidential election scheduled for February 25th. Sonko made this announcement through a pre-recorded video shared on his Facebook page and opposition affiliated media outlets on January 28, 2024. This marks Sonko's first public appearance since his arrest on July 28th of the previous year. The 44-year, the 44-minute video Recorded while Sonko was under house arrest in July, showcases the opposition leader in traditional attire passionately detailing his strategic considerations. A significant aspect of Sonko's message is the formal endorsement of Basilo Diomaye Faye as his chosen successor. Describing Fire as his little brother and emphasizing his honesty and brilliancy, Sonko entrusts the presidential project into Fire's capable hands. The decision to make Fire as the substitute candidate comes amidst uncertainties regarding Sonko's own ability to participate actively in the election. One of the critical Questions arising from this announcement is whether Basilo Diomaye Faye, currently in provisional detention since April on charges including incitement to insurrection, will be granted release to engage in election campaigning. Legal experts are divided on this matter, with some urging that the serious charges might hinder provisional release, while others cite constitutional provisions guaranteed guaranteeing equality among candidates for campaign activities. Osimane Sonko in this video also advocates for the release of Basilo Diomaye Faye, invol invoking the principle of equal opportunities for candidates. The outcome of this request remains uncertain, so as on a formal application for provisional release has been submitted at this time. Meanwhile, Osimani Sonko calls for other presidential candidates affiliated with his party, such as Habib Seir and Sheikh Tidiane Dieye, to maintain their candidacy, contributing to increased airtime for the former PASTEF candidate. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe.